Ladies and gentlemen of the Action Army, what is going on? And welcome to another episode of Answers for Athletes. In today's video, I'm going to give you seven exercises that will help you transfer horizontal momentum into vertical momentum so that you can get your first dunk or at least jump way higher. But before I give you these seven, make sure that you comment jump, J-U-M-P, down below in the comment section for a free bodyweight vertical jump training program. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, and leave your question down below if you want me to answer your question in a video just like this. So let's just a little recap. Yesterday, I posted a video on why you might be strong and fast, but you still can't jump high. I say it all the time. You have to be able to produce a lot of force and produce that force quickly, and you will jump higher. And I got a question saying, well, I can produce force a lot of force and i can produce it quickly i am strong i am fast but i still can't jump high and i gave four reasons number one you might not be as strong or as fast as you think number two you can't produce force quickly number three your technique sucks and number four you can't transfer horizontal momentum to vertical momentum as efficiently as you need to to jump as high as you possibly can. And I figured, why not give you seven exercises because this is one of the biggest, mis or not mistakes, this is just one of the biggest reasons that a lot of you can't jump high or can't dunk is because you have trouble putting it all together. So, these are not technique exercises. I can make a video on the technique, the little tweaks that you can make on your technique. However, these are seven exercises that are going to help your jump technique, help you put everything together without all the little tiny boring minutia that is jump technique, which it might be boring. Some of you would benefit from it, but the the approach that I like to take is just get more reps of jumping and you will get better at jumping. Like that's that's what I like to do for technique. I might make small tweaks to my athletes in person, but we just get more reps of jumping and we do these seven exercises and normally that helps them put everything together. So number one, I'm actually going to save that one for last. Number one is going to be approach box jumps. I'm going to start with this one because this is the one that I use the least. This is the one that is probably least important, but I do use approach box jumps a lot. It is going to help you um, so we're using a two foot approach. I would like you to tr do your left, right and right, left. However, if you want and you only want to practice your um, strongest two foot approach, by all means, go ahead and do that. But with my athletes, I like to practice a right, left approach and a left, right approach, approaching a box and jumping up onto it. We might do varying distances. Um, so we might do just a two foot approach. So it's just the penultimate, or we might run from further distances and approach the box and jump up onto the box. I like this one because it minimizes the load from the eccentric landing. So I will use this when I don't want to add more load from jumping up and landing on the ground with those higher forces. So number one, to help you transfer horizontal momentum into vertical is approach box jumps. Make sure you do right, left, make sure you do left, right, and make sure you vary the distances of your approach box jumps. That's really going to help. The rhythm, um, the smoothness really matters. Number two, approach hurdle jumps. Okay, I'm going to cross these off so I know where I'm at. Number two is approach hurdle jumps. Now, you can do these with one foot or you can do these with two feet. But uh, it's going to be similar to approach box jumps, um, except now you're jumping over a hurdle, and now we are getting the, the forces from that landing, which isn't the biggest deal. Um, but same thing. If you have hurdles, what you can do is right, left, and left, right, and do a penultimate hurdle jump, do varying distances, so move yourself back, uh, maybe do a three-step, a four-step, um, approach, but then single leg as well. You're going to want to do single leg approach jumps, kind of like a gallop over those hurdles. And if you do this, you can actually do them in a row. You can set, you know, a hurdle here. Um, it's going to have to be, you're going to have to 
practice with the distances and, and experiment with the distances, but you could do a single leg hurdle, you know, do two step single leg hurdle, two step single leg hurdle and get that rhythm. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this one because a lot of people don't have hurdles. So number one, approach box jumps. Number two, approach hurdle jumps with both a two foot approach and a one foot approach. Make sure that you vary the distances as well. That's one of the main points to all of these exercises is vary the distances. Like you have to experiment with all of these. Number three is going to be power skips, right? So I, very quickly, all of these exercises that I'm going to give you are going to be some of the best exercises that you can do for your vertical jump. Approach box jumps, maybe not so much, but all of these may approach hurdle jumps, I don't know. Every other exercise, actually, all of these are really good. If your issue is putting it all together, all of these are really good, but individually, all of these exercises are going to be some of the best exercises that you could possibly do to increase your vertical in general. If you have trouble putting it all together, that's just the bonus. So power skips, just the rhythm and the timing of the power skips is going to be highly beneficial. There's so many athletes like when I do power skips, it's just like it's 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 just a power skip. It's very easy. When I see some of my athletes do power skips, it's like I'm just looking at them and I'm like, it's not that hard. Like, how could how could an athlete be able to do something over here? But then, like, when it comes to doing a power skip, they just look really clumsy. So some athletes have more trouble with power skips than the other. They need to work on their rhythm, their coordination, getting the steps right. Um, but power skips is going to be great for single leg jumping, great for transferring horizontal to vertical momentum um, and just a great exercise for you to do in general to improve your bounce. So power skips are an exercise that I think should be in most people's programming. I have it all throughout my programming. Power skips, highly underrated exercise. Then we have, let's move to bounds, right? We'll move to, actually, let's move to single leg hops first. So single leg hopping is going to be less beneficial in the aspect of transferring horizontal to vertical as you would in approach jump, but single leg hops you can do for height, single leg hops you could do for distance, you could do one for height, one for distance, one for height, one for distance, um, two for height, two for distance. Like You can really play with single leg hops in the forces that you get from single leg hops. Um, are going to be higher, they're going to be greater than a lot of other plyometrics that you do. So you do need to start with baby hops. Trust me, like single leg hops is a very intrusive, intensive plyometric. So definitely start with smaller hops. Um, so like low level, low level extensive plyometrics, working your way into high, high level intensive plyometrics. But single leg hops are going to help you learn how to transfer that horizontal momentum into vertical, but they're also just one of the best exercises that you could do to improve your vertical jump in general. So single leg hops definitely deserve a spot on this list. And then bounding deserves a spot on this list. Now, bounding, um, you, you can do in a myriad of ways, you could do single leg bounding, you could do double leg bounding, you could do two single leg and then switch two to the other leg. Um, you could do triple bounds. Like there's, there's tons of bounds that you could do, but bounds is similar to single leg hops where it's going to be higher forces. Um, you're really going to have to attack the ground and it is going to help you learn how to transfer that horizontal momentum into vertical a little bit less. Um, but because it has both components, it is going to help. Now let's get into the most important ones, right? Low rim dunks or small ball dunks are going to be very important. So if you don't have a low rim, then I do want you to do some small ball dunks. And this could be a tennis ball. This could be a volleyball, soccer ball. Um, something that you can palm and use your arm swing is going to be helpful for you so that you don't have to dunk off the dribble. Um, but low rim dunks or small ball dunks are going to be like, if you look at the 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 highest jumpers, like if we look at Jordan Kilgannon, Isaiah Rivera, actually, if you look at, there's a kid on Instagram, his name is Hoopin' Nate. 
and I don't know how old he is. He's a kid, though, for sure. Um, he might be like a, a teenager now. I haven't looked at him in a while. But I was so impressed with not only how high he jumped, but he's like a he's like a teenage dunker. He's, I mean, he's close to 10 feet at this point, and he's a young kid. But just the flawlessness of his approaches, just like not only how high he jumps, but just the technique, and he's doing all these crazy dunks. Um, and I can't help but think, but like, it's just reps and reps and reps and reps and reps of jumps and technique. Like, that's the that's the the main thing that he did was he just jumped and jumped and jumped and jumped and jumped. So, and most of it was on a low rim for him. So I'm telling you, you like the best technique drill is to actually go out and jump and practice the skill that you're trying to improve. So low rim dunks or small ball dunks where you have to put it all together from different spots on the court or varying distances is super, super, super underrated, and you have to be doing that. And then the last one is going to be approach jumps or high object touches, very similar to low rim dunks and small ball dunks, where you have to put everything together. All these little technique drills are going to be beneficial for you. Like the the easiest way to increase your vertical quickly is to fix some technique if you have an error in your technique. But the best way to really solidify your technique is to just get reps and reps and reps. So approach jumps or high object touches where you are aiming for something is very, very, very underrated. So a tennis ball hanging from a ceiling, a part on the ceiling, um, a high wall, part of the rim, part of the backboard. Like you don't, you don't always have to jump and try to touch the same part of the rim. Try to aim for a different part of the rim or a different part on the backboard. Try to aim for the corner of the square on the backboard or the back of the rim. Like try to jump from, you know, like like put something on the floor, a piece of tape, a small mini band, something that you can jump over and still try to touch the other part of the, some part of the rim. Like you have to experiment with it, but you have to practice being accurate with your jumps, right? Some people, if you put something there, like, they might have the height, but like, it's just the accuracy. Do you have the coordination to touch a tennis ball hanging from the ceiling? Like, or are you sitting here missing it? Right. You have to be able to put it all together. And these seven exercises are going to really help you transfer that horizontal momentum into vertical momentum and put it all together so that if you can do what we talked about yesterday, if you are very strong and you are very fast and you can produce a lot of force and produce that force quickly, and that's not your issue. If that is your issue, go do that first while you do these. But if that's not your issue, then these seven exercises are really going to be beneficial for you to put it all together. Yeah, that's all I have for this video. I don't want to sit here and keep yapping. This has already been long. So like this video if you like it. Subscribe to the channel, comment and jump for a free bodyweight vertical jump training program. And leave your question down below in the comment section if you want me to answer your question in a video just like this. But I will see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Peace.